Big question for all of us. What is the difference between positive thinking and powerful cognitions? So let me uh, share you some of the clicks I got in few moments. I welcome you with love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Positive thinking, powerful cognition. So Swamiji has always been talking about powerful cognitions and um, one of the main reasons why I felt that Swamiji was doing that is that is to give people some more understanding about, uh, about what is light spirituality and real seeking. So before meeting Swamiji, I did encounter different groups and people had this very, uh, oh, you know, I love all, this is all beautiful. And this very like a positive way of deciding to, deciding to engage with life only using positive visualizations. And, uh, and obviously people were calling that positive thinking and they should say, you know, you should have positive thinking and this and that and all that. And I was like, I was observing. I felt there is, there was something good about this positive thinking, but I also felt something was missing. I felt that's not completely it. There's a form of delusion in this whole thing. And uh, this is basically uh, what I came to realize after being with Swamiji for so many years and uh, living uh, the powerful cognitions he shares with us and experiencing and questioning and seeking and all that. And um, what I realized is that positive thinking is still in the delusion of duality. It is still at the level of duality. You still cognize opposites and uh, you decide to align to the side which you consider positive, which you perceive as positive or which is generally known as positive. But what I realized, what I felt was wrong about this is that the very fact that you accept duality uh, for me is not, is, that's not it. So when Swamiji started to initiate me and, uh, and empower me with various thought currents of Advaita, the principle of non-duality, then I started to realize, yes, that's what, that was the thing that was missing in positive thinking, is that ultimately there is no duality. Life is beyond duality. Um, at a certain level, you can perceive duality. Um, I personally do not think it is bad as long as you're aware that you're cherishing duality and that you know that duality is not ultimate. If you're aware that you are kind of engaging with this dual thought current because perhaps it is easier for you to relate with things around you uh, in that way, that's fine as long as you're aware of it and that whenever the delusion becomes, you know, because it's like a, it's like a, uh, what's the word? It, it, it's like a driving force, right? If you get caught in the driving force too much, then you get stuck in it and then you're stuck in that vicious circle. So as long as you're aware to the point where when you see that this driving force is taking too much speed, then you unclutch and you come back to the space of non-duality. I don't think um, it is bad, but, uh, but you need to be very clear that duality is not the reality. It, is, uh, it, it can be a way to relate with things uh, to a certain extent, but uh, the more and more the sincerity of the seeking happens in you and people around you and when you speak with sincere seekers i don't feel that speaking from the space of the speaking for the space of duality no longer makes sense when you're actually seeking the truth if it's just kind of a general activities and all that i think that's fine uh but 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 not when you are actually uh cherishing the space of deep seeking into what is the reality um of this existence and who am i and what is what is consciousness and all these big, big questions to which we don't have answers, uh, but to which we have 
powerful cognitions that we can look into and start to experience and realize and have cognitive shifts. So one of the main things that Swamiji added to my life was this cognitive shift understanding that everybody operates from a cognition and that cognition needs to be altered if you want to experience higher, uh, higher experiences, higher realms, higher realities or higher planes of existence. And uh, for instance, thinking that there is good and bad is a cognition. It is a dual cognition, cognition of duality. That cognition at some point has to be dismantled and you need to realize that the reality lies in the principle of oneness, the principle of Advaita, of non-duality. So, so like that, uh, that was one of the major, major shift I had. Positive thinking is in the realm of, I, is in the realm of, uh, of duality and you decide to cognize only the positive and not the negative. But actually, if you look deep down, it's impossible because uh, when you are cherishing the duality, uh, dual, duality thought current, um, you can never remain positive 100% of time because that's what, I, that's what Swamiji is sharing and that's what I realize also. When you go through a high, you will go through a low. The, this up and down cycle has no end. So actually it is kind of a, not fully, uh, it, there's a form of delusion in only cherishing positive cognition, po positive thinking, because uh, actually if you look at your life fully unclutched, you will realize that in sometimes you're in negativity and sometimes you're in positivity and you're trying your best to remain as positive as possible. But this, this, this kind of, there's a big kind of conflict or effort which is experienced inside of you, which is not supposed to be experienced when you realize your consciousness, when you start to cognize the principle of Advaita, of non-duality. So Thought is nothing but your inability to cope up with reality. The definition of a thought as per Paramashiva, inability to cope up with the reality. Whenever you are complete with the reality, you just function without something called thought. If you know you are thinking, there will be an incompletion and itching, irritation. If you are acting out of completion, there will not be any thoughts. There will be signals, there will be instructions, there will be orders from your consciousness to you. But there will not be thoughts. Understand? Signals coming from your consciousness, instructions, orders, commands coming from your consciousness to function to be alive, to be active, to do something is not to be confused with the irritating, itching, confusing, incomplete, internal incompletion thoughts or thought currents. Listen, thoughts are not needed for the consciousness to own process your intra organ, internal organ and your body and move your life. You need to know you confuse between your thoughts and the instructions of your super consciousness to your consciousness, to your consciousness, to your intra-organs, from your intra-organs, to your internal organs, from internal organs, to your body. Don't confuse that and this. Listen carefully. Parama Shiva moves this whole universe without thoughts being in the state of Parama Shanta Swarupa. That shows thoughts are not needed to run your existence as Paramashiva manifested it. Thoughts are you are feeling something is missing, inadequate, not enough, incomplete. That insecurity, suffocation, incompletion, that generates something 
cranky worms going in your brain parasites running your in your intestine that crankiness the thoughts and thought currents generated by that crankiness is not needed to run your life this is the most powerful important cognition you need to cognize understand hinduism fundamentally does not believe in belief system or faith system it very clearly explains the methodology of powerful cognition based functioning system i am not going to tell you believe you don't need thoughts to run your life no i am going to say shravana listen manana internalize nididhyasana start living this powerful cognition so the powerful cognition i am giving you now parama shiva running the whole universe much 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 more than what we are running in our life he is running it from the space of parama shanta swarupa without any thought currents out of pure intelligence when he can run you can run desired you will be in the space and state of parama shiva parama shanta swarupa and live your life you will see thoughts and thought currents become redundant they just fall off from you like a old skin getting peeled off and falling the old hair falling old nail falling just like old things fall off from you the ideology you need thoughts and thought currents to run your life will fall off from you so um so cognitions is not a thinking it's a, it's a very deep profound understanding from which you operate and respond to life and i also realize that actually cognitions it's like a it's a space of powerfulness which allows you to handle anything It is not something you have to build or prepare. When you have a powerful cognition, it's like an independent intelligence which sits inside your inner space and whatever life throws at it, it adapts itself to that situation and responds to that situation while keeping you in a powerful state, a powerful or aware or conscious state all the time. So, um that that's one of the main shift I got and it's about, it's all about having powerful cognitions. Okay, so cognitions which make you uh remember your powerfulness the space of paramashivoham powerless cognitions on the other side is a cognition which makes you forget the paramashivoham so that again is not is is more of a dual a dual kind of realm level because in reality there is no powerlessness there is only powerfulness so that's not like a, and just to bring clarity the it's not like powerless cognition powerful cognition that itself is a duality no uh, powerless cognitions is 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 not uh it, it is a delusion it, it's not an opposite of powerful cognitions powerful cognitions is a cognition which makes you experience the reality as it is powerless cognition is a cognition which empowers your delusion and uh even for my for my part i would i would say now that thinking that life has two sides that dualistic dimension of life uh for me that's a powerless cognition that's that's a delusion it's not true uh sometimes we feel that it's like if everything is one and the same how do we how do we engage with everything and all that so that's a, i guess that's a totally different question different topic because it's a big thing but uh but there is it's not like because everything is one and the same does not mean everything disappears or we don't know how to relate with anything no there is a form of interaction and it's like a it's like a different level right you cannot understand how it works unless you start to operate from that level and as you start to you know uh romance or play around with that dimension you will start to understand how this dimension functions right now we're used to functioning from dualistic dimension so we know the logic the dualistic logic but when you go into 
uh, non-duality, you start to experience multidimensional logic. It's another logic. And it makes total sense once you grasp how that logic functions. So, and it's very much different than dualistic logic because dualistic logic keeps us in this back and uh, positive and negative thing. Whereas powerful cognitions is like a highway towards experiencing the multidimensional logic. And uh, end of the day, from what I understood and what I started to experience is that when your uh, multidimensional logic allows you to remain powerful all the time, it makes you realize that in reality you're always powerful. You're just not aware if you you're just not aware of your powerfulness because you're not cherishing the right cognitions. But if you have the right cognitions, you will realize, you will remember that you're always powerful and you always have been. But you were somehow cherishing a delusion which made you believe, you made yourself believe that <laughs> you were not powerful. You had, I mean, we all have our own reasons why we do that. Then it becomes an individual seeking onto why or have you decided that. And then to decide to stop to decide to cherish the powerlessness and to come back to that space of powerfulness, which is our authentic, natural space, uh, which is the experience of pure consciousness of Paramashivoham. And uh, it is only when we start to uh, get in touch with that, that we also start to realize uh, what is responsibility, right? Before that, we don't fully understand. But when you start to shift towards the multidimensional logic, you start to realize what responsibility actually means. When we say Paramashiva is responsible for the entire universe, what does that mean, right? So, um, so yeah, so inviting you to look into that and uh, perhaps, uh, yeah, if you have any questions regarding this uh, positive, negative, powerful cognitions, multidimensional logic, dualistic logic, feel free to drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer and to share my experience and what Swamji has uh, has shared with me in various ways with all of us. But uh, if you don't listen to it, that song, then perhaps you would have missed some of these powerful cognitions. So, uh, yes. So that being said, thank you very much for watching. Uh, inviting you to subscribe, click the bell icon, like and comment. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much again. Nityanandam.